I'm Thompson, I'm a published author, and the idea behind this podcast is to give you ideas of how to develop your own writing. In this podcast, I'm going to have a look at dialogue. It's entitled Don't Be Afraid of Dialogue. When writing a story, one of the things that comes across as really daunting is writing compelling and believable dialogue. If you look through the writing of many authors, you'll see that it isn't always to get easy to get dialogue right. Some pieces just feel weak, and others feel as though they exist in the author's head, but would never really happen in real life. You want your dialogue to feel like neither of these. So you need to think about how you want your conversations in your book to resonate. In my view, one of the best authors for dialogue is Philip Roth. His conversations between characters add to the story in so many ways. You get to know what the characters are thinking, how the relationships between the characters are in a way that wouldn't work in the same way if you were just told what was happening. The fact he manages to work in rage and humour in balance with these conversations only deepens the value they have to his finished work. You want your conversations in your novel to look and feel as authentic as Roth. If you haven't read any of his work, then now's probably the time. I suggest something like Sabbath Theatre to get us some great dialogue in it with the twisted characters. If you're not sure about the subject matter of Sabbath Theatre and you've had a quick look at it, then American Pastoral is a good alternative. Just make sure you read the book long before you watch the film. There are certain things that you can do to make sure your dialogue is strong and supplement the rest of your writing. Here are a few tips. Firstly, decide whether the dialogue actually adds something to your story. If it doesn't deliver, just don't include it. Secondly, plan what message you want to pass on with the dialogue. If you want to explain the relationship between the characters, for example, then go back afterwards and make sure it achieves that. Thirdly, don't be afraid to punctuate the conversation with descriptions of the surroundings or what the characters are doing or thinking. A piece of dialogue doesn't just have to be the words that the characters speak. I'm going to read through now a little excerpt from my first novel, David's Goliath, and it shows the relationship between two characters. It's a mix of conversation and description, just like the third point I've made. I thought I'd move them there. I don't know where they are. I'll take a look later, was the response from Leslie. You mean you've lost them? How can you lose a pile of books? Anyway, I'm not looking for them all. I just want the one that was on top, the one that I brought back from Spain, David told her. He hadn't mentioned any of the details about the book to Leslie because he hadn't got his his own head around it yet. She knew that he had brought a book home with him and it was added to the pile of books by the bed, but nothing more. I don't know what happened to them. They might have gone missing. This was the spark that was present throughout the rest of the conversation. They might have gone missing. Things go missing around you a lot. Odd socks go missing around you. Tracksuit bottoms go missing around you. Documents go missing around you. Money goes missing around you. And a sense of humour can quite easily go missing around you. And a sense of purpose can go missing around you at the drop of a hat. David spoke in a manner that was half serious and half joking. It was enough to keep the mood light, but also enough to get his point across. He was on a roll. David was good with words. His profession depended on it. He wanted to use conversations like this to inspire her to take action and make some changes for the better, but it didn't work like this. Instead, they were stored up for future use whenever Leslie wanted to make a point about being overlooked. He went into conversations like this with the best of intentions. If the end result could be a return of his books, socks arriving in his drawers in pairs, no more lost documents, saving a little money every now and again and a house full of humour and a sense of purpose in all their lives, he would have one of these conversations every day of his life. But the results were not what his intention was. He knew he'd have to face up to a life of missing socks, missing documents and all the other things that went against the sense of purpose and organisation that were the cornerstones of his life. No matter how much better you are than me, on all these other things there is one thing I have above you. Leslie cut straight to the point that she'd been meaning to make for some time. And what's that? David replied. He was confused at the turn of this conversation he'd taken. He was usually in control. He didn't feel as though his things were getting away from him, but he hadn't steered it in this direction. You don't lose things as easy as me. You are better at working things out than me, and you can throw your words around better than me, but at the end of it all, I will win. You'll win what? What is there to win? As I say, that's an expert for excerpt from my book, David's Goliath. I hope you liked it. I feel it adds to the story because it explains the relationships that's been fleetingly touched on before in the story. It shows the stress that the main character is under and the way he takes it out on his wife. She deals with him in her own way. You can find out more by, by getting the book and reading. Um... I'd really appreciate it if you do, and it'd be great if you've got any comments on that. You can leave them in the um, in, the, in the comment section below. Uh, that's that's this podcast. Um, thank you for listening, and uh, I hope it's something you've enjoyed. And stay tuned.